Hi, uh, welcome to another video. Today uh, I am discussing uh, NRLT mobility uh, and uh, I have touched this topic before in one of my videos and now I will go through the events uh, which are very important when it comes to optimization, setting up uh, your mobility strategy and I will go uh, through these events uh, basically in batches so that you develop the understanding very clearly and once you are working in a network it clicks you whenever you see uh, these kind of terms and you can make uh, a picture around it that how it would be functioning. So uh, the first two events that I am discussing are A1 and A2. So the first thing uh, that come you sh should come to your mind when you look at uh, any uh, parameter or anything related to A1, A2 that this is always related to your serving uh, cell. So whenever you hear the word A1, A2 it means that it has something to do with your serving cell. The event is related around the serving cell. So the A1 threshold is basically when your serving cell becomes better than a particular threshold. So the question will come into your mind that why would we have a threshold that uh, basically describes our serving cell becoming better than a certain value. So the concept behind is uh, the measurement reports. So the major reports are basically uh, channel reports that your UE sends uh, to the E node B describing about the channel quality. Now of course these measurement reports take resources and time on the uplink so uh, the E node B or the scheduler has to decide when to use these resources and when it is necessary to use those resources. So A1 threshold is basically the event when your serving cell becomes better than a certain threshold. So for example, now this is your uh, time zone and this is your RSRP. So as you're moving, uh, as you're moving, so this is your uh, level. So your level goes up and it goes down and it goes back up again. So if this is your A1. So before this A1 event in this region, in all of this region, your measurement reports will have been activated and your UE will be constantly sending measurement reports for your serving cell and for the allocated neighbor cells to your E node B. As soon as this level touches this threshold and goes above it, then your UE will stop uh, basically sending your measurement reports. Of course there will be the concept of hysteresis where basically you do not want any ping pongs and you will have some hysteresis plus minus to avoid that but this is where your you, uh, your serving cell becomes better than a particular threshold and your measurement reports basically cut off. Once the UE uh, now once we discuss the next threshold you will understand that how A1 and A2 basically uh, work in tandem. So if the UE goes here and it again goes down and this is your A2. So what happens is A2 is the threshold when your serving becomes worse than the threshold. So A2 is basically when your main reports will be triggered. So as soon as you are serving a uh, cell and this is RSRP. And this as soon as it goes before uh, below A2, the main reports will again be triggered. So the setting up of A1 and A2 will define how your MRs, uh, your main reports are triggered and how are they sent to the uh, corresponding E node P. Now the concept of hysteresis is actually very important. Uh, we have discussed A2. Hysteresis is something you would always see uh, in parameter settings and the concept is that uh, the level of the UE basically uh, goes up and down uh, very frequently uh, as it is a radio environment. So it will be going like this. So if you have a particular threshold for example A1 here. So if you can see that the level is going it goes up 
Bitcoin goes down. So if this is the case scenario, then you will have ping pong, MR, activation, reactivation, reactivation, activation. So what you do is you do a plus or a minus hysteresis. So you choose this area. So this area is actually your border. So you remove all these above. So if your level is above this level, then you will actually deactivate your MR. And if your level is below this, then you basically activate your MRs again. So this hysteresis basically, for example, hysteresis can be plus 2 dB. So if hysteresis is plus 2 dB and your level, your A1 is actually neg 101. So it will be plus 2 and your actual will be minus 99. So that is how you use hysteresis to avoid any ping pong activation and deactivation in your scheduler and allow the resources to be used efficiently. This is a series that I will continue and next time we will discuss A3 and A4. Uh, till then, uh, thank you so much and keep watching and do subscribe if you haven't uh, subscribed yet and do uh, hit the bell icon as well. Thank you.